guys, I'm having a really tough time with Gen Med right now. I'm not ready for this exam. Me neither. Not at all. I don't remember what an arthrogram is. Does anyone know? That one I actually understand. So an arthrogram is a type of imaging used in the evaluation of joint conditions and unexplained pain. The test requires the injection of a contrast material or dye into the affected joint prior to imaging. This contrast material outlines structures such as ligaments, tendons, and cartilage in and around the joint to better allow the radiologist to identify any present pathologies. And then it can be used in conjunction with CT scans, MRIs, or fluoroscopy. So how does it perform now? So the patient's positioned on the exam table and x-rays are taken to help guide the examiner. The local anesthetic is applied to the area and then a large needle is inserted into the joint. Fluoroscopy or ultrasound can be used to help accurately guide the needle into its proper position in the joint. Once the contrast material has been administered, further imaging can be done to identify the pathologies. But why would a doctor even use this? Well, arthrograms are most commonly used to identify abnormalities in the shoulder, elbow, wrist, hip, knee, and ankle, so all of your major joints. They're especially helpful in cases where previous imaging has been done and did not produce any definitive results. But then complications with arthroscopy are rare, so though. Uh, but those with iodine allergies, those who are prone to infection, and women who are pregnant should consult their doctor before receiving an arthrogram. Other contraindications include reflex sympathetic dystrophy, avascular necrosis of any of the bones that make up the joint, and anticoagulation. Okay, that makes a lot more sense now. Yeah, I think I get it now. See, I'm having a lot of trouble with CT scans though. Me too. Like, I don't get it. I can answer that question for you. A CT scan, basically also known as a computer tomography scan, or a CAT scan, which just takes a different picture, it's a CAT scan is a computed axial tomography scan. It captures one narrow slice of your body at a time, where it's like slicing a piece of bread, you see it visually that way. Where the body casts a shadow on the film when it's exposed to the x-ray, it's kind of like a, f a flashlight casting a shadow on the wall. Slices can be viewed two-dimensional, or they can be added back together to create a three-dimensional image of a body structure. And then you can also have the dye injection, which allows for tissue enhancement during the process. But you have to be careful with that and make sure that the patient's not allergic to the dye, which can cause some complications. That makes sense. But how is it performed? The patient's put on a motorized table, which will move through a circular opening of the machine. As the patient passes through the x-ray, passes through the x-ray rotates around the patient. And the, during the, as they're pushed through the inside of the opening, there's many different angles that the x-ray is taken at. One rotation is one, occurs at one second, and there's several phases that occur through each exam, which is like 15 to 20 rotations, but that's only a maximum of 50 seconds. But the prep time can take about 30 minutes, which makes it which is why it's a long exam. The x-ray source is, produces a narrow fan-shaped beam of x-rays, and the thickness of the beam can be 1 millimeter to 10 millimeters. The data is sent to the computer, and then it reconstructs all the snap snapshots into a cross-sectional image of the internal organs and the tissues for each rotation that occurs. It's not painful, but the table will feel hard, obviously, because it's a hard, cold metal table, and it'll be difficult to lie still through the entire time. The examiner might also tell you to hold your breath, which will be difficult at certain times. But it's used to see images of the chest, stomach, pelvic, the arms, the legs, the organs, the blood vessels, the bones, and the spinal cord. Can anybody get a CT scan? There's only a few contraindications for pregnant women. Um, there's also a risk of developing cancer at some point for young children, adults, and individuals have, who have already had radiation tests that occurred. Again, you also have to be careful about allergic reactions that occur because of the dyes. And the patients with diabetes or those who take a glucophage may develop problems if the dyes used. So they have to talk to their doctor beforehand to figure out when to stop and then when to start the medication again. But it's also used to diagnose circulatory system diseases and conditions for CAD, blood vessel aneurysms, blood clots, spinal conditions, kidney and bladder stones, abscesses, sort of colitis, sinusitis, and injuries to the head, skeletal system, and internal organs. It's also used as a guide for procedures, so such as surgery, biopsy, or even radiation therapy. And uh, doctors also use it to monitor patients through treatments to make to see if. Uh, Radiation's working, decreasing the mass in the body, um, to monitor heart disease, and to also monitor liver masses. That, that actually makes a lot more sense, sense now. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. But I'm still struggling with angiography. Do you guys know anything about that one? Okay, see that one I actually think I really understand. 
and it's also called an arteriography, but it's a procedure that they use this special dye along with an x-ray, CT, or MRI to see how the blood is flowing through an artery. And it's also typically done alongside a cardiac catheterization, and it's typically done in the arm, the neck, or the thigh. That makes more sense. How do they do it? Um, the patient is put on the table, and they're given a mild sedative because they're awake during the entire procedure. The area that they're going to put the catheter in is cleaned off, so either the arm, neck, or thigh, mm -hmm. um, and they're given a local numbing agent. The catheter is passed through an artery in the area, and then it is moved up into the heart using the x-ray imaging for guidance. So once in place, they release a dye, and they continue taking the x-ray, CT, or MRI to see how the dye moves through the artery, see if there's any blockages, um, any problems with blood flow, if there's any aneurysms, and it usually takes about 30 to 60 minutes. Wait, so who even gets this type of test? Um, it's usually used for people if they're having angina, which is unexplained pain or pressure in their chest. If they're having that for the very first time, they typically do this. Or if they're having angina that's become worse over time or just doesn't stop. It's also used with aortic stenosis or if you have atypical chest pains and all the other tests they've done don't have any results. Um, you can also do it if there's abnormal heart stress test results or if you're going to have heart surgery and you're at high risk for coronary artery disease. Cool. Makes a lot more sense now. Yeah. I'm feeling a little bit better for this test. Maybe just a little bit. Sorry, there was a bug. I had to kill it. So, the contraindications. Um, are cardiac arrhythmias, if you have renal failure or kidney damage, if you have diabetes, or again, if you're allergic to the dye, you can't do it.